بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله we uh, have reached the next part which we wish to discuss from the kitab Sharh al-Sunnah and <clears throat> before we begin just a quick recap of what we did last week just to in, in health, uh, al-maraja yani, so we revise what we've gone over wa kama yuqal yani fi i'ada ifada yani and repetition is benefit as well so with that being said what was the main point that we discussed last week what, the, what was the main subject that we discussed last week about the what was the main subject we discussed last week all innovations start insignificant and have symmetry to the sunnah no so all uh, the related innovations in the in the asr is that they begin as something small Innovations will begin as something small and then thus thereafter grow. Naam, thereafter grow. And so, what we understand from this as well, Barakallahu Fikum, is that we cannot disregard any innovation, whether they be relatively small or relatively large. Naam, as a small innovation, even though it is regarded as being small at that point in time, what it ends up as could be greater than that. Naam. We mentioned that there's Turuk that the shaitan takes in order to lead Bani Adam astray. To lead the servant, the servant of Allah astray, there's particular Turuk that the shaitan takes in order for that person to go astray. And it's not a case that the Iblis will essentially call the person to his guidance Allah told straight away. Naam. But there's certain Turuk. The greatest thing and then all the way down until it leads you astray with something. He leads you astray with something. So what did we mention about the Khalafi? We mentioned some things that, that the shaitan does when leading the people astray. Does anyone remember? Well, the first thing. What's the first thing that the shaitan will try to, the greatest thing that will try to lead Bani Adam astray with? Shirk and Kufr. Shirk and Kufr. Naam, Shirk and Kufr. And we're referring to Shirk and Kufr, Yani, whether it be Shirk Akbar or Asghar. Or Kufr, Akbar or Asghar. That's the first thing that the, the shaitan will act upon. Naam, and try to lead the servant of Allah astray with. Thereafter, bid'ah. Thereafter, bid'ah. Naam, innovations. So the shaitan will try to lead the person astray by way of innovations. Thereafter, arrogance. Better. No, not necessarily arrogance, that's specific, but something uh, more general even. Kabair al the major sins. So, beginning, it begins with the Shirk al Kufr. Thereafter, the Bid'ah, innovations. Then, the major sins. Why, and this is from the Kalam of uh, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah. why did Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, mention the Bid'ah before mentioning the major sins? No, and so thus? So, he wouldn't really ask for forgiveness for No, no, this is the difference, the tiraf, the agreement, or the, the acknowledgement. The one that is upon bid'ah, he does not necessarily acknowledge that he's upon wrong. So the shaitan will essentially try to call the person to that first. Because if he doesn't recognize he's doing wrong, he doesn't acknowledge that he's doing wrong, then he's going to continue upon that way. I continue upon that misguidance. As for the sahib kabira, the individual has fallen into the major sin, then he recognizes it, recognizes it as a major sin. Naam. However, despite the fact he recognizes it as a major sin, he does not leave it, or he, doesn't, or he hasn't left it off. Naam. But he recognizes it as a major sin. So then, if we're talking about the one that is more inclined to what was making Toba, of course, it's going to be the one that acknowledges that he is in the wrong. So thus you have the Bidah, then the major sin. After the major sin was what? What did we discuss? Mm. 
after the major sin. Okay. Regret? No. What the shaitan doesn't call something to regret? Definitely not. Because if it causes something to regret, if the shaitan was to call you to regret, then it will call you to tova. Shaitan doesn't want doesn't want the, the servant to make tova. Minor sins, but something specific about minor sins as well, though. Continuously upon minor sins. Now, so the person is musir. He's continuous and he is consistent upon minor sins. Consistent upon the minor sins. After that, what did we mention? After the minor sins. And so what is it? It's not a benefit, but it's still what? It's mubah now. It's, it's uh, permissible. So the person busies himself with the actions that are regarded as being permissible. So he's busied with that. So the shaitan wasn't able to call him to anything of any action of disobedience. So then, that which the shaitan busies himself with is, or busies the servant with, is, are the actions which are of, not ben- of no benefit to him. And they're mubah, they're permissible, but they're not a benefit to him. Now, so essentially, the shaitan cannot call you to disobedience. He will seek to cut you off from obedience. Cut you off from obedience and busy you with the things that are not of benefit. Are not going to be yani, actions which are majura, actions which come with yani, ajar, reward. Time. And then finally, what? Now that the person is, is the person is busy with the lesser of the righteous action. So there's all they're all righteous actions. However, he's busy with that which is lesser than them. Now, so for example, a pick at a particular point in time, he can do any action. He can do one action or another action. At that time there's there's a action that is better for him to do, but he does the one which has less benefit. So if the shaitan can't call you to Leaving off Ajr altogether, he'll call you to yani, the lesser of the maximizing of benefit. So these are the talk of the shayateen. And so why this is, uh, why we mentioned these, uh, these points here in relation to the point of last week is because everything begins as something small. And the madkhal of the shaitan can even be calling you to something of obedience. The magic of the shaitan it can be even when it comes to calling to an action of yani, obedience. However, the action of obedience is not an action which is the best action for you to do at that particular point in time or in that particular place, my fellow. So, however, the shaitan wants to call you to that which is always lesser. Naam. And so we mentioned that when it comes to innovations, that they begin as something small and regardless of being many, maybe minuscule. However, they grow. And what was a, a clear example we gave of that? We gave one distinct example of that. Are you talking about waswas with the wudu? Waswas with the wudu, that was, I meant to in terms of innovation. We mentioned a particular innovation that began as something small and was that, the way that we see it today is completely different. Oh, is it the Sufi? Mention the Sufis, I mention the Shia, no. No, and the example of the Shia, to show you, was what? How did it begin? Ali. That they preferred Ali over Uthman. So they preferred Ali over Uthman. So the Tartib in relation to the Khulafa Rashi, in relation to the Khulafa Rashidin, when it came to the people that had some form of the Shia, was that they, they would have the same Tartib, the same order. So it was, when it came to the ordinal matter of the companions and the Khulafa Rashidin rather, they would state that Abu Bakr was the first. Then Umar, they would agree with that. However, when it came to the affair of those that came after, rather than saying after Abu Umar was Uthman, Naam, which no, that is Sahih, they would say Ali. It should have been Ali, then Uthman. Now, this is how it began. And then we look to where it ends up now. We have the individuals cursing the companions. 
make a takfir or some of the companions. Naam. Beating them in the streets, beating themselves in the streets. A lecture of such as these. They can denial of the ayat of the Quran. And so this is an example of this. It began as something small and then increased and increased and increased. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. <coughs> now, uh, as for today, inshallah, then we have our next section. And if we could have Jabez, for them, if you can read the, the text, please. قال المؤلف رحمه الله فانظر رحمك الله كل من سمعت كلامه من أهل زمانك خاصة فلا تعجلا ولا تد ولا تدخلا في شيء منه حتى تسأل وتنظر هل تكلم فيه أحد من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله عنهم أو أحد أو أحد من العلماء فإن أثبت فإن أصبت فيه أثرا عنهم فتمسك به ولا تجاوز ولا تجاوز لشيء ولا تخطر ولا تجاوز ولا تجاوزه لشيء ولا تخطر عليه شيئا فتسقط في النار نعم and the English So look, may Allah have mercy on you and everyone whose speech you hear, especially among your contemporaries. Do not be in haste. Do not act upon any to it until you have asked and considered. Did any of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu or one of his scholars speak about them? If you find any narration concerning from them, hold on to it. Do not leave if anything. Do not prefer anything to it, lest you fall into the fire. No. Essentially, this speech here, is a nasiha from the author, Rahimahullah, was mentioned by Shaykh, Shaykh Ali al Nas al Faqih. He mentioned this is a nasiha for the Muslims. Yani that the person has a particular mu'amala with the kalam of the people. How do you deal and how do you, how do you treat the speech of the people? And no doubt, previously, you may find that when it came to innovations, innovations may have not been as widespread as they are today. For example, it's possible that there are a particular innovation or innovations in a, in a, as, a, as, a, as a collective I may not have reached a particular land. However, in this time that we're living in now, we find no doubt that innovation may reach a particular place في لحظة in a moment نعم with the, with the uh, invention and advent of the internet and all the likes of that that we have now even more so where a new affair may spread and it may spread within a, within a, within a split second or a moment and the reality is that the people may have increased, the numbers may have increased, but with that, you find that innovations have increased, the differences have increased, the groups have increased, as well as speech, the kalam of the people has increased as well. So you find that the people, they speak, and they may speak when it comes to, I dispute the, 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 the deen, and make intisab, ascribe something to Islam. However, it opposes the haq. It opposes the haq. So essentially, what you find is that uh, the Imam, Baba Hari, rahimahullah, he's come with this piece of advice in how to weigh up the speech of the people. And in what manner we address the speech of the people. Because people will speak. People will speak upon ilm. People will speak upon jahl. People will speak upon hawa. People will speak upon desires. Naam. People will speak upon ra'i. People will speak upon their opinion. And so if you all you're receiving is the aqwal al-nas, the aqwal al-nas, 
that upon you, no doubt, is to ask and to know, yani qa'idat, as a principle, how to weigh up that speech and how to address that speech. And so, <coughs> Sheikh Fawzan, Hafizahullah, he says, La tasta'jil fi ma tasma' min al nafs, khususan in the ta'akhara zaman. And so do not be hasty when it comes to the speech of the people. Now, I'm not be hasty when it comes to the speech of the people, khususan, yani specifically, when it comes to the later dates. Like these days that we're living in now. Naam. وَكَفَّرْ مَنْ يَتَكَلَّمْ وَيُفْتِي وَيَلْتَسَمْ لِلْعِلْمْ وَالْقَوْمْ And so you find how many people speak. I speak in terms of ilm, deen. وَيُفْتِي Give verdicts. Naam. And this is their speech. This is, this is the manner in which they are. Disseminating the speech. Naam, lima, lima, jaddat, wasa'il al-i'lam. And then he mentions due to the fact of the advent of wasa'il al-i'lam in the media. So remember, this is the, the Sheikh, he wrote this book decades ago. He explained this decades ago. And so when he's explaining this, Muhammadullah, <coughs> he's discussing uh, the advent of media and how media can be a means of bringing out more of the speech of the people and exposing people to more of the speech of the people. That's the media. This could be in relation to news, naam, news channels, different television channels, different radio stations. And that's before. Naam, Fadlan, what we have now, in this year, 2023, or 1444, what we have now, where we have not only just media, yani armor, but what we have was, was referred to as social media. Before, when we were referring to the media, the person would have to have been given a platform by someone else. Now, so for example, the media person, he wants, to give, he wants a platform, or he's been given a platform, He's getting a platform by a radio station. He's getting a platform by a television station. For example, now we live in a time with social media where the people create their own platforms. And the one that has love for the kursi, the one that has hubba riyasa, has love for leadership, he can create that kursi for himself. He can have that platform for himself. So this affair of these platforms being built with this social media and the likes of that now means that anyone can enter this arena of speaking. And this is what you find. And you find that this is the action in Allah Ta'ala knows best, those that are seeking that leadership. And sometimes you find it from the actions that from our ikhwa that are genuinely unaware of the harms that may come with it. So they genuinely may think this is actually of doing good. But they don't realise that they're engaging in Dao now. And engaging in everything that comes with Dao. So for example, on the extreme of it, you have a person, Jahil, he has no knowledge, he hasn't sought knowledge, he hasn't engaged in seeking knowledge from the ulama or the tulab al ilm or anyone. He has his opinion. And he is mu'jibun bi'ra'i. And he is someone that is impressed by his own opinions. So he opens a YouTube channel. For example, so we have now YouTube. And maybe simultaneously opens a Twitter account. And starts speaking. And this becomes his da'wah. Now. Nah. And so this is, uh, and this becomes widespread. How many, how many times have we seen this? Whether it be in whatever medium, whether it be in the English language, other languages, the Arabic language, the same thing. And then you have the other, the other extent, where an individual is hadith. And he may have studied something from the Arabic language, 
and he's benefited. Yani, as we have the Medina books, alhamdulillah, the benefits from the Medina books. But then he rushes to start translating and putting out the translations to the people. Now, thinking, inshallah, I just want to do some good and, and the rest of that. Not realizing that he's now engaged himself in dawah. And now he's building a platform for himself without any form of awareness or self-awareness or awareness of whatever, what harms can come with this. And so these are the two, if you like, the two extremes. But they're, all, they're, they're wrong in, each, in, in their own way. This one's wrong because he's seeking platform and he has absolutely no knowledge. This one's wrong because he has a degree of ghafla. It's a degree of heedlessness. And so, when the Sheikh is mentioned here then in the media, and by extension of that, no doubt, social media, then, no, then this, is, this is even more so a situation or a scenario where we have to weigh up the speech of the people in accordance with yani the, what the Sahaba are upon. The Akwal of the Ulama. And I'm them. Now, and so the, the Shaykh continues by mentioning that the people that you find people that may be upon Dalala, they may be upon misguidance, and they begin to speak with the ism in the name of knowledge and the name of Islam. However, and the Shaykh also mentioned, Hatta Ahlul Dalal. And so then what you find are the people of misguidance, the people of innovation. These individuals start to speak based upon or speak making intisar, you know, ascribing to knowledge, and ascribing to deen. And so, what is upon the individual that is there is stratagem. And he weighs up what is being said in light of the kitab and the sunnah. Thumma ayna ta'allam sahibuhu wa amman akhad al-ilm and likewise the one that is the sahibuhu yani sahib al-kalam the one that has the speech ayna ta'allam where did he study this? And man akhab al ilm. Who did he take his knowledge from? Right, these are kawaid. These are principles that we live by. That we have our teachers, our mashayikh, our ulama. And we know who they've taken their knowledge from. We know where they've studied. Who are their teachers? You can say, my friend, that this is my teacher and he studied with Shaykh Ibn Baz, my friend. Now what would we say though in response to such individuals where we say, we hear that they studied with some of the scholars and they say that for example, Fulan, Shaykh Fulan, he studied with Shaykh Ufaymin or he studied with uh, Shaykh Al-Albani or he studied with Shaykh Ibn Baz. Naam. For example, uh, there's an individual in London, Haif Mahaddad. They say, he said it was Sheikh Faymin. I was used to mention him, he said it was Sheikh Bin Baz. Now that he's Muntasib, and he has an inscription to a particular scholar, a scholar that is known to from the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, can we now say because he, that he studied with this scholar, he who huwa, and he huwa, Salih on the al That such an individual now is an individual that we can take knowledge from. Because we ascribe, it's said that he's a, scholar, he's, a, he's a student of this scholar. Is this correct? No. No, why? He's not upon what Sheikh Ibn Faymin was upon. He's not? He's not upon what Sheikh Ibn Faymin was upon. So he's not upon what Sheikh Ibn Faymin no. So, he can't be a student if he's a student and follower. Essentially, no. That a person cannot be ascribed to that scholar if you're not upon the same thing that they're upon. 
if you're not upon the same thing that you're, that you're upon, then how can it be said that you took ilm from them? Because you may have studied with them, they may have said words, and you wrote down those words. But in terms of your a'mal, your a'mal is different from his a'mal. So it can't now be said that you're a student of so-and-so. Because when we talk about ilm, we talk about ilm al-nafi. When we refer to ilm, we refer to ilm al-nafi, beneficial knowledge. When we refer to ilm al-nafi, beneficial knowledge, that's the ilm which comes with its amal, with its action. It's not just gathering information. So when it's said now that the, uh, this is something that is mentioned by our uh, Mashaykh, from, from the Shaykhana, Shaykh Ubaid, Rahimahullah, where he mentioned that he cannot say that you are, you are a student of a particular Shaykh if you are upon a different way to him. Nah, yani, upon a different etiqad to him. Your creed and his creed are different. Uh, your man has that, the man has your job rising upon, and the man has that he's rising upon are different. You can't now say that you're the same. I uh, you, you took from him. Because you clearly didn't. You may have attended his lessons. Well, how the shape? That just means you attended. That means maybe you got a tick on the, on the register. That's all. But not that it can be said that if you are from those Al-Ladina. أخذوا عن شيخ فلان علم. He took knowledge from the particular sheikh. Likewise, as well, along with that, we have the well-known author of Muhammad ibn Sirin. In the Hadith Alma Din, فانظر عما تأخذون دينكم. Indeed, this knowledge is a religion. And so, look to whom you take your religion from. Look to whom you take your religion from. So we understand from this as well, Barakallahu Fikum, is that who we take our religion from is for our own selves, right, in terms of our own ilm, our own, our own talab. However, when we are looking at the one that is disseminating something from ilm and deen, then we have to look at who he took his religion from. The same implementation of the Athar. So just as we implement the Alpha for our own selves, and so we know who we take our, our knowledge from, we implement the same thing now when it comes to who we're looking to take in from as well. Who did he take knowledge from? Who did he study with? And this is what is mentioned by the Sheikh. Now, for highly more, تحتاج إلى التثبت. These affairs need to be clarified, and these affairs in particular need to be affirmed. يعني specifically, and these are the ones to take knowledge from. And these are the individuals where we have to affirm knowledge comes from them. We تثبت them. When we say a tathabbat as well, then we don't mean a tathabbat as is mentioned by others, where they state tathabbat in relation to acceptance of akhbar. Now, no doubt we need to clarify and we need to affirm what the reality of our individual is. However, we do not state that this tathabbat is the same tathabbat as mentioned by those who have deviated, for example, Abu Hassan al Ma'arabi. Deviated maybe 20 years or, or, or longer. Where they will state this affair of tathabbat, I the affirmation of what a person is upon, you have to have seen it for yourself. Naam. So, for example, if it was said that so and so in Haraf, such a person has deviated from the, from the path, the correct path. Then it would be said that you have you seen it for yourself? Did you see his inhiraf? And by extension of that, the call that you find a lot of people state, did you ask him yourself? So it would be said, for example, so and so al haraf and the Salat al Mustaqim. The Salat al Mustaqim, the person is deviated from the Salat al Mustaqim. They say, did you ask him yourself? And they will say, did you ask him yourself why? Because there's two sides to every story. Have you heard this before? There's two sides to every story. First and foremost, this is not 
a concept which we regard as being Islamic. Where we say there's two sides and we have to listen to everyone's side. Now, this is a concept that we, we, we adopt here in the, in the West, the UK. Where we have to hear everyone and then we make a judgment. The reality is, us here now, we are not here to make judgments. We're not, we are not yeah, any judges. I'm not a Qadi, you're not a Qadi, you're not a Qadi. All we are here to do is study our religion, act upon it, and attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when a person says now, did you see it or did you hear what he had to say about it? No doubt this is not from the way of the Salaf of Salih. And in reality as well, it's not, it's غير منتقي. It's not something we can say is logical. For example, you say that Fulan deviates, is deviated. And he says, have you gone and asked him yourself? What's he going to say? Is the person going to say, yes, I'm a deviant. I, I've, I've opposed Islam. I've opposed the Sunnah. That, as we mentioned earlier, we're talking about deviation from the Haq and Bid'ah, the inner person, yeah, he believes that it's good in and of itself. So he's not going to turn it to you now and say, that this is something that I see to be, yani, I agree with you that it's in, it's in Hiraf. And likewise as well, we are not from those that lend an ear to others. How many times you heard of the narrations, the Salaf, when they put their things in their ears when it came to the, the Aqwal, or even a recitation of Ahlul Ahwal. So how can it now be said? How do you listen to, listen to his side? What does he have to say? And so, it's important just to mention this point as well. Because not only is it important, yes, that we affirm who are the people of truth and how we affirm, but it's important now how we affirm that these are people of truth. And it's not a case of if a person's misguidance will become manifest, that we have to go and further check it. If we come manifest with Adilla, then, then we don't go to the extreme where we say we have to further check it. And Shaykh and Shaykh Rabia, he mentions some kalam from Al Qurtabi, Rahimahullah. And he mentions the kalam of Qurtabi from the from his tafsir of the ayah, Ya iwa ladina amanu, in ja'akum fasikum bidabin fatabayyam. Because we mentioned, Rahimahullah, Thaniya, Fi hadi ayah dalil ala kubur al-qabr al-wahid, Ida kan adlan. And so within this ayah, is dalil, is proof, that we accept the speech of one individual if he is trustworthy. Liyannahu inna ma amara fiha bitathabbut in the nakl al-qabr al-fasih. And rather, within it, Allah Ta'ala has commanded with tathabbut, yani, this is a confirmation, when it comes to the lack of the transmission of the fasik, and the one that's confessed. And the one that is affirmed, that he is confirmed, that he's upon fisk, that he's upon wrongdoing, and evil acts. Now, so when man bufabata fisko ho batala, kolo ho filakba, it's man. Lian al khabra amana, wal fisk, karina til yubtiloha. And so if we understand the verses upon, yeah, the fisk is a fast, this is something that nullifies his akbar, that which is informing us of. It is man, by the way, it's man. Why? Because khabar, that which, is, that which has been transmitted as khabar, as speech, naam, is an amana, is a trust. And the fisk of an individual is a karin, is a surrounding a factor which nullifies that amana. So when we are saying now, naam, so when we are stating that such an individual is trustworthy, if we understand that an individual is trustworthy, and we understand 
that from he's taking where he's taking his knowledge from. Naam are the thiqat, yeah, the, those that are trustworthy we're taking knowledge from. We suffice with that. And we suffice with that which they disseminate from knowledge. Naam. He's a trustworthy individual. And so this is what we understand from this, that the tathabbut is when, and seeking further confirmation, is when someone is upon fisk, yani if someone is upon sin and wrongdoing, and so their akhbar, that which they're informing us of, has to be verified. When you verify it. And it's not a case that you verify at every single point at every single juncture. And again, as we mentioned previously, that such a principle has been laid down where they say that you need to verify if <coughs> something's been said about an individual, jarhan. If something's been said about an individual which is disparaging, that this has to be verified. They say this generally, and they lay this principle to make it difficult now to disparage. To make it difficult to disparage. And if you add difficulty to disparaging, what happens? What happens if it it's becomes more difficult to, dis- to disparage and reject that a person, a, an individual? What happens after that? It spreads and it accommodates him as an individual and others like him. This accommodates that. So upon us, first and foremost, no doubt, is to affirm who we take knowledge from. Affirm who we take knowledge from. Secondly, is that we reject those individuals that should not that should, those should not be taken from, for whatever reason that it may be, maybe be that maybe other than that. And we accept the akbar about these individuals as well, as long as it's come from trustworthy people. And so, what we understand from this barakallahu fiqum, this ayah, in Surah Al Hajrat, Ya Yuladina Amanu. If a fasid comes, now you confirm what they're saying. If someone is, then the opposite of that is true. If someone is trustworthy, then we understand from that. We accept their call. Now, likewise, Ibn Kathir, he mentions, which is the same ayah, Ya ta'ala bit fi khabar al-fasid yahtat lahu. And so, Kathir, he mentions that Allah has commanded us with seeking further confirmation when it comes to the speech of the fasid in order to have safety in his akhbar so that a person does not judge upon his speech. Whilst he may be lying or may, whilst he may be erroneous. So this is the case. I, when it comes to the, the one that is the first, now there's a particular dealing. As to the one that's trustworthy, then we accept the, 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 the speech of the one that's trustworthy. And so this, again, as we said, goes hand in hand with the one that says, the call, you may hear the call of a person that says, but did you see him do this action? Again, this is not a condition. Or it goes hand in hand with the code of the one that says, did you speak to him about what he did? Again, it's not a condition. Now, these are the, these are the things that you hear, you hear being said. But they oppose the haq. They oppose the manner in which Ahlul Sunnah deal and make the tabot of the, of the truth. I affirm the truth. Now, and so these are, it's upon the person to have the, yani, a degree of Caution when dealing with these, and Allah Taala knows best. Thereafter, Sheikh Fozani goes on to mention: "فما كل قائل حتى ولو كان فصيحا بليغا يشكك الكلام ويأخذ الأسماع." لا تغتر به حتى ترى مدى ما عنده من العلم والفقه فربما فربما يكون كلامه قليلا لكنه فقيه وربما يكون كلامه كثيرا ولكنه جاهل 
ليس عنده شيء من الفقه بل عنده سحر الكلام and so what is possible is that he don't take speech from everyone speech is not taken from every single individual نعم even though the person may seem fasih he may seem elo- eloquent in his speech or that person he may have speech which is and as they say hard hitting نعم the speech which reaches or has an effect upon people or the speech that captivates the ears of the people how many times have you seen these people these, these du'at and it may be said about these du'at yeah, the du'at is in those that call to evil نعم that these individuals they are callers to the truth because look how many followers they have or because when, I, when they speak, I'm captivated by what they say. This is what was said about uh, Anwar Awlaki when he first began his da'wah. That his da'wah, and he began, essentially his da'wah first began when he started giving da'wah to the seerah. Speaking about the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no doubt anyone that hears the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is captivated. And his life, alayhi salatu was salam, was one which is of great interest, yani genuinely speaking. To the extent that you find that the people, even the people that are not Muslim, regard him, alayhi salatu was to be the most, the most influential figure in the history of mankind. Due to the life that he led. And so, this was the madkhal of this individual, Anwar Awlak. This was his madkhal, this is how he entered upon the people. With captivating speech when it came to the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thereafter, bit by bit by bit by bit, he started to mention affairs of what? Takfir. Started to mention affairs of infijar. Yani explosions and irhab. Yani terrorism. But the affair was first and foremost, catch the people first. And then call them after. To what you are upon. Because when he first began talking, a lot of the people would say, again referring to Anwar Awlaki, a lot of the people would say, I don't know what he's upon. Naam, and those that maybe had weakness when it came to understanding of the manhaj, say, I don't know what he's upon, but I like his serious series. My fellow. And the reality is of that. Is that, as mentioned by the Sheikh, it's possible that a person does not speak much, however, that such an individual is faqih, is a person of a great understanding. Bel, him not speaking much can be an indication and an alama of his fiqh. It can be a sign that he has fiqh indeed. So, no doubt. The best of speech is that which is short and concise and to its point. And this is how, and this is how the people, or this is how a person should be as, a, as an individual. That if a person speaks much, it does not mean it's indicative of their end. As the Sheikh mentions, it's possible the person, he speaks little, but he's faqih. He's a person of fiqh. And then a person, another individual, speaks little or often. A person speaks much, but he's jahil. No. A person speaks much, but he's jahil. He's, he's an ignorant individual. And the, 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 the affair of quantity of speech, or quantity of lessons, or quantity of mahadarat, yani lectures and being in front of the people, it's not an indication of the person's fiqh, fiddin. Rather, as, you, as it could be said, it's possible that the person may speak less. An individual may speak less and this be an indication of his fiqh. An indication of his tawadu. How many times do you see from the tawadu of our scholars, yani the humility of our scholars, that by way of that humility, Allah Ta'ala raises them in rank. 
as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa informed us of that. When tawada lillah, rafa'ah. Whoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah Ta'ala will raise him. And this is all from Allah Ta'ala. And so, it's a must that the person is, he acts upon, yeah, this affair of uh, Hadr. He's the individual that is uh, cautious when it comes to that. And that he understands that uh, the speech may be from what is regarded as being sorcery. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in the Minal Bayan al Sihra that from speech is a degree of or from speech can be a degree of sorcery. I uh, sorcery in terms of captivating the people. But not captivating upon truth. Naam a person may sit, may speak, and you may find that a person quotes another individual. <coughs> and you say, but what's he delete? Say, I don't know. But it sounded good. I don't know what he said, but I think it's the truth. Because it sounded good. Well, you call off. People say such things. I believe what he believes. Say, why do you believe what he believes? But he said, and he mentioned some good stuff. That's it. He wasn't captivated. He wasn't captivated by the essence of the nusuls, yani what was found in the nusuls that was mentioned. He was captivated by the way that it was presented, the way, the manner in which that the kalam was fasih, the manner in which the kalam, naam, the kalam was eloquent, and the language that it was used was good, or to its point. Now. And so, thereafter, Sheikh he mentions, uh, Baba Hari mentions, I had to look to the Kalam of the people of your of your time, the Zamanik. I do not be hasty with, with regards to it. I do not enter anything from it. I do not be hasty to enter anything from it. And of course, like anything, we shouldn't be hasty. So again, someone might say something, and through haste and due to haste, we take it. And we take it as, de- as deen dayanatan, yani. Why? Because we are captivated by what, not what was said, but how it was said. Again, as Sheikh Ali Nasser, Allah, he mentioned, this is advice. This is a piece of advice and these are pieces of advices that are based upon Qawai principles. Naam, that you don't just take the speech. You don't, and you don't hastily take it. I don't hastily enter upon it. You act upon it. Naam. Because it's possible that the person is jahil. Naam. And. Shaykh goes on to mention. Now, she goes to mention لا تعجل في قبول الكلام أهل زمانك حتى تتثبت منه أين هو من أصلنا أصلنا الأهل أصل الأهواء أصل الجهل أصل اختلاط العلم بعضهم ببعض حتى أصبح يموج بالفتن والشرور والشرور وأفكار and so do not just hasten to accept the speech of the people of this time rather you have to look at how is such an individual in relation to the people now at the time we're in now now at the time we're in now where it's a time where Jahal, ignorance has become widespread. Where you have the affair of knowledge mixed in with it as well. That's why you find that people are led astray. Going back to what we discussed last week, that an innovation may be small and begin as something small. Now, not only that may it begin as something small, 
but our innovation may be uh, something that resembles what? The truth. Innovation may be something that resembles the truth. Or kalimatul haq. Or read behind batin. Or a statement of truth intending batin. So in, this is something which is even more widespread in the time in now. Where you have a statement and it becomes mixed with truth and falsehood. Or you have a statement and it has ilm within it. Yani ilm shari'i, yani haq with it. But it has jahl with it as well. Yani batin. So a person should not rush towards accepting the statement of an individual. Rather, he looks at what the person is upon. Now, likewise, Sheikh Hosan goes on to mention an important point, which is the importance of faham in the fiqh. And he says it's not a mas'ala, they said the mas'ala kafrat al hif. Or kafrat al kalam. Al mas'ala, mas'ala al fiqh. And so the mas'ala is one of fiqh, one of understanding. The reality is this. A person may be able to memorize. And this is just an indication that he's able to record what he sees. Or record what he hears. Now his, 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 his dhar is maybe excellent. In terms of when it comes to recording whatever he hears, whatever he reads, he, has, he might be very good with that. However, when it comes to his understanding of that, and that may be something completely different. There's something we, ex- we experience, we see in the, when we're in the Jama, the Jama Islamia. They may have some tulab, and they were excellent when it came to exams. Excellent, excellent. Now, why? Because their memorization, it was like uh, anything they read, it was like they, they memorized it like, they, they, like it was Fatiha. No, the, the memorization was excellent. But it was short term memory as well. Meaning that their memory was good. But if you ask them about that mas'ala, yani, a couple of days later, after the exam, they will say, Was that even a mas'ala before? We were even asked about that in the exam. Much less even would they know the issue itself. Why? Because the focus was on memorization. And not an understanding. It's not just a mess of hef. That person just memorizes. Now, before you'd find the people would praise, example, Yahya al Jori. They'd praise Yahya al Jori. He memorized this, he memorized that. From the Kutub al he memorized this. He memorized these ahadith. Tayyip. What about the hadith about the father of the companions? Before he spoke about the companions. What about the hadith about all the narrations? Naam, or the nusus, or the nusus when it comes to the honor of the Muslim. Before he spoke about Ahlul Ilm, about due rights. So he memorized all these nusus. And if he was to ask him about a particular nas, a particular text, he'd be able to relate it back to you. But then when it came to the faham, he clearly indicated that there was no faham. He clearly indicated he did not understand. He did not understand. This is a, this is a, a prime example of that. And that example is very clear. Why? Because not only was this a person that was lauded and praised for him, he took followers with him upon that basis. Does that make sense, Ikhwan? The people were attached to him upon the basis of hif, memorization. However, when it came to faham and implementation of what was memorized, it wasn't there. When it came to implementation of what was memorized, it wasn't there. And so that faham and qasim now, that deficient understanding led him upon a path 
and he took individuals with him. Why? Because it is the individuals that were with him were deceived by way of the knowledge, by way of the, the memorization of knowledge. This is an important point in the Sheikh mentions that the mas'ala is a mas'ala of fiqh. Naam, a mas'ala of fiqh, a mas'ala of understanding. Message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa mission. Man, ridin illahu bihi khayra. You fuck you hofi deen. Whoever Allah was good for, he gives him understanding in the religion. Naam, he gives him understanding, he's in fiqh for deen. If Allah said it was good for the individual, he gives him fiqh for deen. Understand of deen. It's not merely that the person memorizes. No doubt. And again, it's not what I point to belittle memorization. But the Talib al end should be the one that memorizes. The Talib al end should be the one that memorizes, revises. And that he has that end for Sadrihi. As some of the Ahl, as some of the, the, the Salaf would mention, that the knowledge is that which you take into the bathroom with you. The knowledge is that which you can take into the bathroom with you. Rafu? Understand? That you take it to with you. I, it's, it's there, it's memorized. You're not carrying, you can't carry a book in with you. But that which is in, that which you memorize, that which is for the Sadr, it's there, it's with you, carry it with you. No doubt this is an important part of in. However, yani having those nusus, whether you have the nusus in the books, you have the nusus that you've written down, or you have the nusus that you've memorized, <coughs> they don't benefit you if you don't understand them. But if you don't understand them, you can't act upon them. If you don't act upon that, if that knowledge, then that knowledge hasn't benefited you. And so, when we're looking at who we take the knowledge from, and how we weigh up the speech of an individual, then it's a mas'ala that comes back to the fiqh, understanding, faham. Who has understood this affair of deen correctly? Now, and so, as is mentioned, you have the narration of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the father of Surah Abi Dawood, and Surah Al Tirmidhi, Rubba Hamil al Fiqh, who are Ghayr al Fakih. That person is a Hamil al Fiqh, yani, and he's the one that carries knowledge. He's memorized something of knowledge. However, he's an individual that is not faqih. He's, in, he's an individual that is not a person of understanding. So such an individual now, we know that there's someone that may, he may have the ability to memorize. He may have the ability to carry that knowledge. But in terms of his understanding, he may not have the understanding. He may not be in that regard. I grant success so that he understands and disseminates that, no, that knowledge. And so thus, <coughs> now, you may have a person that's a ham and naq wa naqin. So you have a person that is an individual that carries knowledge and is a naq and he disseminates that knowledge. Lakin the whole lace be faqih. However, he's not a faqih. He's not a person of understanding. Now, with no doubt this affair of fiqh is from Allah Ta'ala, that which Allah Ta'ala has grown successful individual. And so, thereafter, as Baba Hadi mentioned, the person asks, هَلْ تَكَلَّمْ بِهِ أَحَدٌ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْنَبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله عنه did anyone, I, that, which speech, that speech has come to you, weigh it up in relation to the speech of the companions, of the Prophet sallallahu Did anyone from the companions come with this speech? Naam. Did anyone from the companions come with this speech? With the same speech? And essentially, this is what we discussed previously as well, when it comes to this affair of as -salafiyya. When we say we're salafi. We say we're Salafi because we make intisab to the Salaf. We ascribe to the Salaf in the way of the Salaf. Why? Because no doubt we say that we adhere to the Kitab, we adhere to the Sunnah. We adhere to the Book of Allah, we adhere to the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, 
Kamin and Nas, how many people will say we adhere to the Kitab and the Sunnah? Now, how many people say that this is a, this is my practice of Islam? Uh, this is the this is the hadith for what I do. This particular hadith means that I will do this action. Or a person says, I do this action and this is the ayah. Naam. As to why I practice what I practice. For example. So, because not we are at a time now where deviation may become more and more and more taqeeq. And the deviation from the truth becomes smaller, smaller, and it's more precise. And it's more divisive or deceptive. And it resembles the truth more. So what is upon the individual when presented with something from a coal? And with that coal may have no source. What is upon the Salafi is that he asks who from the Salafi, yani beginning with the Sahaba, as mentioned here, who from the Salaf understood the affair as you understood it? Now, who preceded you from the, from the companions? Who, what, whatever you're saying, who from the companions said the same thing? Now, and that is the Misa. That is the distinguishing factor between the Salafi and the Khalafi. That's the distinguishing factor between the one that adheres to the manager of the Salaf and the one that adheres to the manager of the Khalaf. The one that hears the man is on the self, that when it comes to a particular, a particular affair in deen, he will say, who said this from amongst the companions and the self of this ummah? And wait up according to that. And this is the asas. This is the basis of our practice of deen. Now, so if you find speech, you're a jibbuk. There may be speech, you're a jibbuk, and it's speech that you find is Enticing is good. Let us dajjal with this betty. Do not be an individual that is hasty in relation to that speech, taking that speech, acting upon that speech. Rather ask and weigh up according to the companions. And this is a basis of what we're upon. And this is a qaida. This is a principle of how we practice our Islam. Now, and then the Shaykh goes to the mission. لو أتيت بشيء لم تسبق إليه فإنه يكون شذوذا وخطر أكثر من نفعه فكلام الصحابة هو الميزان لأنهم تلاميذ الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم ينظر قولهم في الآية بما فسروها وفي الحديث بما شرهوه and so if you came now if you find that speech has been brought forth however there is nothing to precede that speech then you know that this speech is from the shudu you know that this speech is a speech that is in opposition opposes that which is the haq and its danger is greater than its benefit. So the danger found within it is greater than any benefit that can, that can be re, re, related to it. And so the kalam of the companions is the mizan. This is what we weigh everything up upon. The kalam of the companions. And when we look to the ayah, we say, how did they describe this ayah? Or how did they explain this ayah? How did they explain this hadith? Why? Because they are the students of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are the students of the Messenger of Allah. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And so we take from their speech. And we take from their tafsir. We take from their speech. We take from their explanation. لِأَنَّهُمْ أَقْرَبْ إِلَى الْحَقِّ مِمَّا جَاءَ why? Because they are the closest to the truth. They are closest to the truth. Closer than anyone else that may come after them. So we weigh up according to the kalam of the companions. Likewise, has anyone from Ahlul Ilm, from the ulama, stated this, this, this statement? So if a person comes with a statement, Yani, say this is deen. Then that question is after that. 
يعني حتى كلا به أحد من الصحابة يعني الصحابة سيدس أو يعني أو أحد من العلماء أو أي من العلماء هذين من العلماء ما يتستاس ستيتمنت نعم أي قاله أحد من العلماء عم تبيرين نعم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله عيا على الصلاة Now, <coughs> as mentioned, that this likewise, we say, who from the ulama has spoken with the speech, and the, the ulama that are regarded as being the mu'tabirin, and those that are salih on the akhil ilm, and the ulama which we take knowledge from, and not anyone, now not anyone that's just mu'tasib in ilm, just an, any individual that we, is, we say is ascribed to knowledge. Now, Rather, the one that is affirmed, as you mentioned previously, affirmed to be from the ulama thiqat, in the trustworthy scholars. I is mentioned by the Sheikh Fazal, "Imma al-ladina yusirun al-amalhaj al-sahab or al-sahab al-sahab to Rasul." Those that traverse upon the methodology of the companions of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Naam, li'annahum hum rawat al-sahaba. وَصَحَابَ هُمْ رَوَادٍ عَنْ رَسُولِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Why? Because they are the, those that narrate from the Sahaba and the Sahaba narrated directly from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم So no doubt, this affair of Al, as we mentioned previously we look to who we take our knowledge from and once it's affirmed that these are the Imma of Deen and these are the Ulama of Deen then no doubt we, we seek and we seek to take knowledge from them and traverse upon the path of ilm and taking ilm from them. And there's no difference in that regard. Finally, <coughs> Baba Hari mentions as well, فَإِنْ أَصَبْتَ فِيهِ أَثَرَ عَنْهُمْ فَتَمَسُّكْ بِهِ And so if it, this is what they, you take in front of them is correct, uh, in accordance with the person has a statement, and it's in accordance with the statement of the companions, what the companions were upon, or the person has a statement, and it's in accordance with the statement of what other than they were, uh, or what other than they were, the companions were upon from the ulama, then you take it, now and hold on to it. Why? Because it's mawafiq with haq, it's mawafiq with haq, rab. It's in accordance with the truth. وَلَا تَجَاوِزْهُ لِشَيْءٍ And do not surpass it, and do not Seek to reject it for anything else. Now, a person should not reject the call of the Salaf 
I want to sell it for a pawn for anything else. And thereafter, he mentioned finally, وَلَا تَخْتَرْ عَلَيْهِ شَيْئًا فَتَسْكُرْ فِي النَّارِ And do not take and choose anything other than that, which may cause it or cause the person to fall <coughs> into the fire. Why? Because that which the Salaf came with, نعم, no doubt, is the Haq. And it's better than anything that from Mutakhirun, anyone from the Mutakhirun has come with. And who's, who will come after have come with. And that this is a means of a person entering the fire. We have the Billah. Why? لِأَنَّكَ خَالَفْتَ تَرِيقَ الْجَنَّةِ You've opposed the tariq of Jannah. The path to Jannah is the path of the Salaf of Salih. The path to Jannah is to be upon what the companions were upon. And their students from the Tabi'een and their students from the Tabi'een. The tabi'een. If you oppose that, then you oppose the path to Jannah. And hence why Bab Hai mentioned it's a fire of the fire. Naam, the path, because the path to Jannah has been opposed. In which Allah Ta'ala mentions the Ladina and Amallah Alayhim and Nibi was Siddiqim was Shahadai was Salihim. Wahasnu Ulai Karafiha. Yani the path which Allah Ta'ala has bestowed his blessing upon. And amongst them are the prophets and the truthful, the martyrs and the righteous. And what a noble and good companionship to have. I know that have traversed one that that tariq, that path to Jannah. They're not upon a path of good and noble companionship. The one that opposes that path is upon the path to the fire. And no doubt has opposed the traversing upon the Surat al Mustaqim. And Allah Tabarak Ta'ala knows best. I will conclude inshaAllah with that point. Ta'ala next week. We will continue with that next point mentioned by Abba Bahari. Rahimahullah. Jazakum al khaira. Wa barakallahu fikum. Wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabi ila yawmi dina ma ba'am.